this one story, I feel like it makes me think of like how life feels so normal for the most part. Like you get your routine, everything's nice, cozy, Dark. relaxed. Dark. What? I'm gonna make it. Oh, oh, okay. Let me see. I, I, I left the game. Oh my god! Oh my god! You did it! I did it! You did it! You died a hero. I did it! Or you lived a hero. There you go. Second one's true. Yes. Good job. Good job. All right. Anyways, back to our story. It makes me think about like how life is so predictable, almost safe. You like you get into this habit of feeling like nothing bad's gonna happen, and it's like things can just be upended at any notice. And th this really speaks to that. So this is a bit of a a bit of a small explanation in this title, but he said his house was haunted, then his family disappeared. I hate when that happens. <laughs> it's totally. It's like all the time. I'm like, what the hell, family? Seriously? Why? Where'd you guys go? But just no, a it, ghost. It's like honestly, just saying like, oh, it has some crazy paranormal aspect, that's not even the crazy part to that. Like that's that's the tame shit. Well, eh, not the tame shit, but it gets way weirder. Okay. So, do fear, forgive me, I was settling in my chair a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, let, let's go ahead and start with this article here. It's not too long. It, eh, yeah, it won't be too long. We'll skim through it. So, on the fall evening in 2009, the Jamison family disappeared into the woods of Oklahoma, leaving behind a set of bewildering clues and a case that remains unsolved today. Bobby Dale Jameson and his wife Cheryl Lynn and their six-year-old daughter Madison were living what appeared to be normal lives in Eufaula, Oklahoma until October 8th, 2009. There's the family that went missing. That day, all three of them mysteriously disappeared from their home with no indication of where they could have possibly gone. After a few days of searching, the police turned up the family's pickup truck, but it only raised more questions than it answered, which... They don't really cover this in, well here, let's see. The truck was found in Latimer County, about an hour drive from the Jameson home. The family had recently been in the area looking to buy 40 acres of land where they planned to live inside of a storage shed until, I'm sorry, that they already owned. So this doesn't really fully cover it. It just says it was basically found away from their home in another county. But I've seen where it was left. And it, it's, it's really weird because it's like, it's the definition of a nondescript patch of road. It, it's just like there's nothing there. It's just their truck pulled into the dirt with nothing around it. And that's the last clue they have. Well, outside of the things that were happening before then and inside the truck. So, okay, Wait, so. Huh? They plan to live in a storage shed? Yeah, that's really weird. The, the, it gets weirder, though. There's way more weird stuff, and, uh, including stuff about the storage shed. This whole situation is just, it's like, what, what happened to these people? But okay, let, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, but the items discovered inside the truck seemed to indicate the couple had not planned to be away from the truck for long. And inside, investigators found their ID wallets, phones, Sherilyn's purse, and the family dog, which was malnourished but still alive in the backseat of the truck. They also found $32,000 in cash. Nice. Yeah, it's just like that's a lot of money to just randomly be carrying around with you. Makes you wonder why. Both Bobby Dale and Sherilyn were on disability at the time of their disappearance, and where they could have gotten that much cash or what they intended to do with it was unknown. It's like, okay, so these people, they're not they're just like everyday people. Like it's as viable as them having for $32,000 cash as it would be for me to have $32,000 cash. And I'm not the kind of guy who just springs up with that kind of money. No, where the heck would I get that? Exactly. It's like, what the fuck? That's honestly the $32,000 cash, and we'll get more into that later. That's like the weirdest thing because it's such an insane thing for somebody to have, and these people have no means of getting that. But that's, and they left it in their truck when they disappeared. Yeah, meaning like, that, oh, we don't need that money. The thing that's crazy about that is, like, if they were robbed or if, like, somebody run them off the road, which is honestly something you wonder about, although there were no other tracks found, um, why wouldn't they have taken the money? It's yeah, like... That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's like a year's salary at some jobs. And those aren't even bad jobs where it's a year's salary. <laughs> so, it's like, it doesn't make sense. But, 
Let's see. Investigators suspected that drugs may have been involved in the disappearance and that the large amount of cash was the result of the couple either buying or selling drugs. Well, I don't think they were equipped to buy them, but we'll see. Selling them would explain the cash. It would, but at the same time, there's this is just a blind suspicion. The couple has no history of illegal drug use. That This is legit just the cops don't know. And they're like, eh, maybe. Um, but they couldn't explain why they would have brought their daughter along with them. That's another thing. It's like, if you're selling drugs, why do you have your family pet and your daughter with you? It's like, look, man, they, they hide the drugs in the daughter's <laughs> See, clothes. You, you hide in the diaper. They're like, hey, yeah. my daughter needs a side side change. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got some baby wipes. I might let you handle the changing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, it's it's still really weird. Like that's the thing. It's like every explanation. There's something else to mitigate why that would have ever happened. So they couldn't explain why they. Yeah, they couldn't explain why they brought him along. Um, let's see. And it was impossible to tell from the condition of the truck if they had left voluntarily or if they'd been forced out of the car by someone else, perhaps leaving their belongings behind while under duress. A search party was formed and investigators combed the, through miles of woods and the surrounding area looking for any trace of the Jameson family. They turned up nothing. A grim discovery. The case went cold in November, I'm sorry, until November 16th, 2013. That day, just three miles from the truck were, was found, or I'm sorry, from where the truck was found four years earlier, hunters stumbled upon the partial skeletal remains of two adults and one child. Forensic testing proved they were the skeletons of the Jameson family, but due to the state of decomposition, the, st the cause of death could not be determined. The police went back into the case. First, they uncovered a strange security video taken outside the Jameson home the night they left. In the video, the couple is seen going back and forth between the house and the truck, packing up their belongings. As if that weren't strange enough, prior to their disappearance, Bobby Dale had gone to his pastor and claimed that his home was haunted, saying that he had two to four ghosts on the roof. What? That's a weird... What are they doing on the roof? Exactly. It's like, what the hell is that? that? It's like, okay, ghost story, fine. Whatever people have those. Who the fuck has ghosts on the roof? Yeah, there's like two, maybe four. Two to four. Just chilling on my roof. Are you sure that's not Santa Claus and his elves? But hold on, I have the video here. And I think you've already seen it because you, you were called. Yeah, I've seen the video. But Yeah, it is it is kind of weird. And there's more details that the police offer, office, I'm sorry, offer here. I'll, I'll show it to you guys in a minute. But as you can see, they're walking out there. Now, the second angle, you see a little bit more. The weird thing is, like, in none of this, do they ever interact with each other? Do they ever look at each other? There's nothing other than just them walking. And the police describe it as them being sort of like almost in a trance. Now, the thing about that. And the thing that's not shown in the video, because the video is very hard to find online. I had to look into this one guy's channel who had it. I couldn't find the original video. Uh, the cops do confirm it's real, but it doesn't seem like it's publicly available anymore. Now, the thing is, though, one of the I was reading over one of an interview with one of the detectives, and they were saying that what really made it strange is that they were taking an insanely long time to pack up their truck. Like they had like 50 to 60 trips going out there. Like it took them all day to do it. And they kept yeah. carrying things to the truck and out of the truck, like like they were in a trance. They were saying, like they it didn't seem like they like I said they never spoke to each other. They were just like walking back and forth. It, it almost seems like and like the amount of stuff found in there. It doesn't seem like they found a whole lot. They just found like the kid. Well, the the um I think they said like the chair for the kid and the dog and some money. It wasn't like it was loaded up with like a million different things. So it does bank in the question. It's like, why were these people just walking to their truck and back all day, seemingly looking like they were busy without actually doing anything? They were trying to trick the ghosts on the roof. They were watching them. Advanced ghost mind games, I guess. It's it's very strange. Um, but anyways, let's see. So yeah, two to four ghosts on the roof. That was where we left it. And there's now. Didn't they say they checked the woods when they found the car? That's another thing. It's like, okay, well... Why didn't they find the bodies then? To me, that, that makes me ask, what if the bodies weren't there when they checked the woods? That, 
that's a possibility. Yeah, it's like afterwards. If this was a, and, and it sort of does lend itself to that because there, remember there wasn't a lot of evidence about it's it's still so strange any way you slice it. It's like if somebody abducted them, you'd think that they'd found like tire tracks from another vehicle that they found something. They didn't. There's no sign of a struggle. They just disappeared. And they time traveled. <laughs> who knows? Um, but it's like they're. It does make you wonder, did their bodies get taken or were they taken? They weren't killed right then and there. And then they were killed later and dropped off there once the heat had died down. So there's a lot of questions as to what really happened to them. That's well, I guess that's the nature of a cold case, I suppose. But why didn't they take the dog? Well, I mean, I guess they didn't want to deal with it. No reason to. It's not like it's going to snitch. You don't know that. <laughs> but it's very... um. Yeah, it's very odd because it's like if you go with the angle that somebody kidnapped them, then where's the evidence of this other party there? There's not any. But at the same time, how do you explain their bodies not being found there? It, it really, I mean, you could say that maybe the search party missed it, but if they had a large manhunt operation going for several days after and it was only three miles away from where it happened, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of finding it doubtful. And it was like a, it wasn't really like a mountain range, it was like a hilly area. So it's not like it was, it wasn't the greatest terrain, but it wasn't like, I've seen videos of the place where it happened and it's, it's not like it was like impossible to cover terrain where it's like, oh my God, no one can make it up the side of this cliff. So no one ever found them. Hmm. So I don't know. The whole thing seems crazy sketchy, but now we're going to get into the satanic Bible that was found and what's going on there. Okay, Cheryl Lynn had also purchased a satanic Bible allegedly as a joke. However, Bobby Dale confessed to his pastor that he had read it, leading some people to believe that witchcraft may have been a factor in their deaths. Cheryl Lynn's mother, Connie Kokotan, believed that the Jamesons had somehow gotten entangled with a cult and were murdered by violent members. But she never named a cult, and no evidence has ever been discovered to supply or to support the theory. Now, I have another article which we'll be looking at in a little bit. But first, we're going to cover some other theories. Police do you think Satanists do witchcraft? Uh, well, a satanic cult, I don't know if that's necessarily the same as a Satanist. I want to say there's a, some sort of difference, but I don't know. But yeah, yeah. It, I, basically some evil worshipping cult that wants to sacrifice people, which I mean, I, I guess they, they probably do exist, but they obviously aren't necessarily the types that I just be like, hey, we're here, get used to it. Um, Y'all ready to sacrifice? <laughs> it's like, all right, who's your firstborn? Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> but there's hey, other... All day. <laughs> Satan's a busy man. <laughs> but um, there's other theories, though. Let's see. Police did look into the theory that the, it had been a murder-suicide. They uncovered an angry letter written by Sherilyn to Bobby that was 11 pages long. This led them to speculate that Bobby Dale had driven his whole family into the woods, murdered his wife, daughter, and then himself. But this th theory could not be proven. So yeah, she did write an angry letter. It was basically like, hey, you're a shitty dad. Um, just generic, frustrated relationship stuff. Why she wrote a letter instead of talking to him, I don't know, but yeah. Um, it could be one of those things that she's just venting and she wasn't actually gonna give it to him or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, excuse me. Need a little swig there. So, I mean, it's a possibility, I guess. But then again, that doesn't answer the question. Why were their bodies never found? And also what that doesn't address is why was there $32,000 in the car? Look, man, murder is expensive. I guess so. He had to like pay his own assassination fee to himself. Yeah, he's like, I'm, okay, I'm going to kill them. <clears throat> But I gotta pay me because I have a split personality <laughs> where other, I am the assassin, but I am also the victim. The assassin side of me would be really mad if I double crossed him. And I don't want to see him mad. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, even that doesn't make any sense. There, there's so little sense. This made. Plus, if you're going to murder them, why would you go out into the middle of nowhere? Why wouldn't why you bring you... the dog? Yeah, that's, that's another question. Why would you bring the dog? Why wouldn't you just do something like shoot the wife first, then go to your daughter's room and shoot her? I, I know it's a little ugly sounding, but there's no logical reason for so many things in this case that I find that hard to believe. And why were the, the rest of the family seemingly in on it? 
<laughs> I don't. They were like, "Yeah, let's go get murdered." Well, it was only it was only the daughter who was six, so I mean, it's not like she would really know anything better. But it's just it's very That's suspicious, fair. and it doesn't address the biggest, most puzzling thing, which is how they got all that money that they had no means of obtaining, and why they took it with them. Uh, Time travel. I guess so. Another hypothesis considered that Bo that I'm sorry was that Bobby Dale's father, Bob Dean Jameson, had been involved. Bobby Dale had fi filed a protective order against his dad, claiming that he had threatened to kill him and his family, and that they were afraid for their lives. Hi, Trent. Bobby Dale's petition for a protective order paints the picture of a very dangerous man who thinks he is above the law and was involved in prostitutes, gangs, and meth. So, I mean, this guy sounds like he could be a little bit on the shady side. Let's check our chat. Damn it, Bobby. Okay, we're still about the same where we were. Yeah, so... so this guy's name is Bobby, and he named his kid... Or no, his name is Bob, and he named his kid Bobby. Yeah, not necessarily original, but then again, that's a country thing. They, they like to have that long lineage going. Um, Damn it, Bobby. So, the thing is, though, Bob Dean Jameson died two months after the Jameson family went missing and had been in poor health for some time. His brother, Jack Jamison, claimed that he was either in a hospital or a rest home at the time, and although he was a disturbed individual, he was not capable of being involved in the murders. So this guy was on his deathbed when all this happened. Dude's in, like, a fucking retirement home, and he's like, hold on, nurse, I need to go kill my son <laughs> and his he, family, he had and his then hide them in the him. woods and not take the money, and then I'll go back home. He, he just, like, chased them down in his walker. <laughs> <sighs> okay, but and then the case seems to have many leads, but none of them led anywhere conclusive, which is pretty much the conclusion I'm making as well. And the investigators remained unsure of what to make their mysterious appearance and death. Israel Bo Beauchamp, I guess, who had been the Latimer County Sheriff at the time, stated that a lot of investigators would love to have as many leads as we do. The problem is that... They point in so many different directions. Despite all the mysterious clues and theories, police haven't been able to untangle the mystery of the Jameson family deaths. The case remains unsolved to this day. Now, I wasn't necessarily satisfied with some of the details because I'd seen some interviews and they didn't cover everything there. So I went ahead and dug up this other one that it covers more of like the uh, paranormal angle of what was going on. Okay, so let's start with the initial statement given by the family's pastor, Gary Brandon, who claimed the family had been involved in spiritual warfare and believed their home was possessed by spirits. No, this doesn't exclude drug use. In fact, it may argue for it. But we must point out that the police found absolutely no evidence of illegal substances or drug use at the property. Prior to her disappearance, Sherilyn Jameson had claimed that the spirits of a long-dead family lived alongside them in their home. Even more disturbingly, that their daughter Madison spoke frequently with the youngest spirit member of the family. Bobby Jameson had asked his pastor, who it should be noted has since moved out of the area and will not speak to anyone about the case, about acquiring special bullets and a satanic Bible that might be used to exercise the house of its spirits. So, just an aside. What are I you just? I just am imagining Bobby. With his spirit gun, just like shooting at the ghosts that are on his roof. Well, I mean, who uses a satanic Bible to exercise an evil spirit? Like, wh where, where yeah, does... That seems like the wrong plan. It's like, that. that's usually known for inviting the bad stuff in, not necessarily getting it out. Well, maybe you should have got, like, an actual Bible. That, that might be a good idea. Like the, like, I don't know, K King James Version? Like, That's regardless pretty... if you believe in it, it's certainly a better idea than a fucking satanic Bible. He's like, look, I don't, I don't like any of the versions of the Bible, but the satanic Bible is a pretty good read, so. Man, they say I can have sex with whoever I want, kill whoever I want, do drugs whenever I want. <laughs> Be gone, spirits. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> well, let's see. During the initial investigation, a witch's Bible was found in the Jameson house. Then investigators discovered That's cryptic messages written on the walls of the moving container. So they remember the storage container they were going to live in? Um, oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, the family was using the house side storage. One of the messages read, three cats killed to date by sick people in this area. Witches don't Wait, like their sick black cats killed. What the? Wait a minute. Yeah, that's that's weird. It's like, is that a threat from like a 
local witch coven? I don't know. It's, it's Are very... they fighting witches now? I don't know. It's very He's strange. like, look, I got ghosts on my roof. I got witches fighting. I need special bullets, man. I need my spirit gun, man. You, you <laughs> show this shit. We good. Uh, hold on Our one safe. second. My I dog is we'll... getting uppity. One second. Par, do you think that like the dog was a werewolf and that's why the dog did it holy shit the dog was in a it was all along the dog that that's it the dog that's ate why the... you needed special bullets because you needed silver bullets to fight the dog the dog was the werewolf and that's he ate the people and then vomited them up years later that's what it is it's advanced dog mind games it all makes sense now we all got outplayed Oh. They were just going to Vegas with that money, but the dog was like, uh uh. That's my money. I'm getting me a new collar. But then the cops came and were like, oh, look, a dog's stuck in the car. And he's like, no, wait. Damn it. <laughs> but, anyways, moving on. Um, on November 19th, 2013, an article was published in which Sherilyn's mother, mother, Connie, who speaks with unnerving lucidity during the interview, stated that she now believes a religious cult was responsible for the family's disappearance and her granddaughter, Madison's was on her i'm sorry on a cult hit list that Damn. yeah that part of oklahoma is known for that cults and stuff like that from what i've been told and from what i've read connie said i was told around the time of sherilyn's disappearance that she was on a cult hit list the unnerving perhaps subconscious suggestion here is that madison may have been a sacrifice to a cult or used in a satanic ritual which Let's see. There was no information on the source of that claim or why she believed a cult was responsible and had tar targeted Madison. That's actually not true because I looked up an interview with the mother on this when she was talking about it. So apparently what had happened was she's saying she was contacted by a lady. I'm sorry. No, her friend was contacted by a lady who used to be in a, I, I think she said white supremacist cult that got into Satanism or something. I I'll post the in interview in the what discord the later. Fuck? Yeah. Um, but apparently that lady had found like books with people's names in them and some of them were crossed out and when she had um contacted the people in those books or tried to she had found they often corresponded with missing people so that's where this whole thing sort of started up now this source is unconfirmed this information's unconfirmed but that's why that's one of the reasons why she's leaning in that direction it looks like okay um let's see However, it should be noted that in 1993, around the time of the David Koresh Branch Davidian cult compound near Waco, Texas, the Oklahoma newspaper ran a story in which the US, a U.S. Marshal confirmed that some cults have found a home in eastern Oklahoma, and some of them are extreme. Another story about the Oklahoman reported the mysterious case of Tommy Raymond Estep, who disappeared after a trip to Eufaula, the same town where the Jamisons lived. Police found his truck abandoned at a highway crossroads on 35 degree north latitude. That's going to come up later, which brings us back to the paranormal explanation. We've discussed the details of the family's odd descriptions of their Ufala home being possessed by spirits of a family that died long ago. We discussed that Bobby had been reading a satanic Bible and had asked to their pastor about getting special bolts to kill the spirits that were haunting them. It was also reported that Sherilyn Jameson had suggested to at least one friend that she was a witch, and we know she, or possibly Bobby or Madison, scrawled a large, or I'm sorry, scrawled a strange message about witches on their moving container, which we don't necessarily know they did. This, I think this person's making an assumption to that, which I mean, it's possible. Uh, let's see. Now let's tie in other disappearances and murders in the area, as well as the disturbing pattern regarding the 35th degree latitude. This is interesting. So, yes, you see this fucking pentagram on the map that has to do what with this. The fuck. Okay, so both the Jamesons and Tommy Raymond Estep disappeared at this coordinate, which is also the site of a brutal murder that occurred in Anarco, I'm sorry, Anadarko, Oklahoma, a month before the disappearance of the Jameson family. I believe they're talking about the 35th degree. Um, Pastor Carol Daniels was found viciously sadistically murdered in her church, a crime scene that District Attorney Brett Burns described as the most horrific he had ever seen. Daniels' nude and mutilated body was staged behind the church altar in a crucifix position. The, loca okay. 
Yeah, the location of this murder rests on the 35th degree latitude and the, the same coordinates at which the Andrea Yates drowned her five children in the family bathtub in 2001. Occult psychic and Kabbalist Salog. Salog? That's, they don't have a last name, they're just Salog. Sounds like a fighting game no. character. Salog. It's like we just run into these Fight. fighting... <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> it's like we know Salog is like the Voldo of reality. <laughs> but anyways calls the 35th degree latitude the line of tragedy as countless other murders and deaths have occurred along this path we're gonna have to look at that like murders along the 35th degree latitude i kind of want to research that more hmm. but yeah that's... i think i've heard of that before i've not heard of that one before personally but yeah that is rather interesting let's get back to our chat sorry i couldn't see chat while we were reading over this um let's see nature finds a way Wait, what? That's not a suggestion of that statement. I would, wouldn't assume sacrifice. I would assume she was murdered for fucking with the cult. I mean, you could see it in either direction, to be fair. They could be considered the same, Let's see. really. Your death has just been accelerated if you get on any hit list. I mean, yeah, that's kind of what a hit list is. I mean, yeah, that, that's generally like, okay, this is, a, this is a to-do list. Although apparently it was quite long and had a lot of people that had gone missing on it from what they were saying. See, that's pretty crazy. I mean, just there's so many questions with that, and not like the, like they said at the end of the first woke. <laughs> America <laughs> is just a large pentagram. Oh my god, I wake up, sheeple! <laughs> you got to be awake. And part, and part of Canada too. Oh my god, Canada abducted this woman. That's how they get so much maple syrup. It all makes sense. If you draw a maple, or if you draw a pentagram. On a maple tree, then that that tree has a pentagram on it, just like Holy that map shit. did. Firm proof. Everyone needs to wake up to the realities of this world. We're, we're laying down the hard truths that no one wants to accept. Oh my god, it's just like everything about that is just so like, what the fuck is going on? And it's like I, I was watching the interview with the mom, and she described how she was happy. When she found out that her daughter was dead. What? Yeah, well, keep in mind the this fuck? is years after. I, I thought that too at first. I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? Because she's like, oh, I was so, it was so relaxing and calm and it was a sense of joy. I'm like, oh, okay. But you got to think about it. And it's like, it's really easy for us to sit here and be like, you're a fucking weird lady. And she probably is to some extent. But you got to like, think about like the thing you were most nervous about in your life that you've ever done and think about the weight of that question that it had on you not necessarily what would happen but the unknowingness mm. like it could go one way it could go this way just running your mind in circles of all the things that could possibly happen it's that like, makes sense she yeah. finally died and she was like well at least i don't have to worry anymore it's like she's probably like we've seen her now after these years have passed but it's like she probably it's not that she didn't grieve for her daughter it's that she had to grieve for her daughter and she had to grieve for all the other possibilities of things that were happening to her daughter yeah and it's like it's just like i i know that like the the things that are like the hardest things i've ever done in my life it's always like i always try to teach myself this that it, it's not what will happen like it's not i'm not scared of failure like let's say a classic one which when i was younger was much scarier asking a girl out mm -hmm. not scared of being rejected because i mean rejected it's like you, it sucks you're awkward with her you're like okay whatever bye and you, you feel shitty you get over it but at the same time that's not what scares you what scares you is you're overwhelmed with possibilities it could happen that way it could be like a big thing where she freaks out at you it could go great and then you've got to figure out what to do there's so many possibilities and your mind is trying to wrap your head around all of them at the same time and it's the collective weight of those possibilities that is a huge burden that's true so i feel like that's been that mom's entire life for these years so she's just like finding out it's like okay well i figured this is probably something and now i know and i can just i can breathe is i i feel like that was probably where she's coming from that makes sense yeah i, I it's like at, at first and like i was watching comments to the video and everyone was like yeah this lady seems really chill about her daughter dying but yeah I, 
after thinking about it i i can empathize with where she's coming from on that i mean she probably still agreed but she was also like <sighs> at least it's over yeah exactly it's like it's not great she's not happy about it but the question's done on. yeah okay let's try to get another dead by daylight match going here let's go in here let's hop back over here Alrighty, so let's see here. Let me get a swig of water. God, I'm running out of swigs here. Um, so, was it saying that Cheryl was a witch? Apparently, or she part had, of that call. I don't think it was saying she was part of that call. I think she, it was saying she was, or some people had believed she was practicing witchcraft. Apparently, she told somebody she was. But I, I don't believe it was saying that she was part of that cult at any point. Why did the cult have it out for them? <sighs> that's that's a good question. Maybe she was. Maybe she was. Maybe she was, and then she left. And they didn't like her leaving. It's possible. To... <laughs> There's no shortage of questions, only answers. But then what was going on with the ghosts on the roof and the special bullets? Yeah, we need to know. Did he get his special bullets? That That is another yeah, thing, did, though. Did, did did the pastor ever say if he could get special bullets I don't for think shooting he, ghosts? I, I don't think know. the pastor got him ghost bullets. But um, no, that's yeah. another interesting thing, though. Um, I didn't mention this, but this was also brought up in the inter interview. They had a gun, and the gun was never found. What the fuck? So that gun... Whatever happened with it, they were in a situation where that gun disappeared with them. And both them and that gun, it, without a trace. It, it's so strange, because it's like, just think about it. It's like, you, this normal family, nothing really going on. They, they're having, well, they're having some ghost shit going on. They're having some family trouble. So not the greatest life, but one day, they go into a trance. This crazy, weird thing where they're like just walking back and forth to their car looking like they're packing but not actually doing it like i said they brought items to the car and then brought them out of the car repeatedly and it yeah, like that's took... the part that it's really confusing is they kept taking them in and out and in and out it's it, like what the fuck are they doing it's almost like they're not really in control of their bodies and something's trying to make it look like that's what they're doing like it mm. doesn't make any sense and then like they were possessed and it was trying to make it look like they were packing for a trip but they weren't actually and then it's like they just drive off into the middle of nowhere, vanish without a trace, no sign of any foul play. Then the area is searched, and then three years later is when their body gets found in the area that's searched. Yeah, like, where the <laughs> fuck were the bodies? That that is such a weird story. I'm like, yeah, that, where did the gun go? I was looking through a bunch of stories. I'm like, I've got to cover this one. This one's just insane. And what was the money? Yeah, and that's what were they the, gonna do with the money? Pay how, off the cult? And it's like, how did they get the money? If it was drug related, why was their daughter there? Why was their dog there? And why is it still there? Why and is it, the money and the dog all that was left? And let's be real about it. There's no reason to believe it's drug related. That we have, no, they have no association with any kind of illegal drug use at all. And the, if it was drug related, and like the. The deal went bad, and the guy killed them. Why didn't he take the money? Yeah, exactly. It's like if this was if this was a murder for drug money, then there'd be no reason. If it was a murder suicide, somehow the bodies just didn't get found. If we go with that, why the fuck was the money there in the first place? Or why was the murder su suicide taking place in a forest when you could easily do it in a much less suspicious way in your own home? <sighs> so many questions. Pretty much no answers. Uh, let's see what Paris has to say here. Ghost took the gun. The ghost was... I'm sorry. The ghost has ghost hunt killing bullets. Oh, my God. The ghost... He's going to be a king of the ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ghost hit the bodies. What if ghosts can, Wait. like, turn you invisible and, like, pull you into the ghost dimension? So you said there's two or four ghosts. What if there's three ghosts? What if it's their ghost that traveled back in time? to fuck with them oh my god time traveling ghosts of yourself this is the new meta like they died and they're haunting their own house before they actually died <laughs> advanced and they haunting themselves to do that weird trance thing and then drive out and die 
this is some advanced tactics we have here. These are advanced oh, ghost tactics. Oh, man, but that was just like such a mind fuck of a case. I, I feel like we're having some pretty good talks today. I, I feel like I'm definitely going to want to clip this show up and put it up on YouTube. Except the more you go into that story, the weirder it gets. Exactly. It's like, hey, whoa, wake up. Wake up, sheeple. The Illuminati, they're having time traveling ghosts kill our people. They're putting the chemicals in the water. They're Come on, turning... man. We need to get those spirit bullets. Yes, we need the spirit bullets. The I'm liberal media. The, time ghosts. the liberal media is trying to distract us so we don't know we need the spirit bullets. 